In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the two ways that I optimize images for websites. One is through a photo editing software on my computer, and the other is through plugins on the website itself. I'm going to show you how both of them work. I'm going to show you the difference between the two, which one is more convenient for me, and then you can decide which one is more convenient for you. And we're getting started right now. So if you're wanting to include this nice big image of the Northern Lights into your website, it is 764 kilobytes and 3,300 pixels wide and 2,199 pixels high. That is very large for an image on a website. Large in both pixel size and weight. It's just too big. This is a big mistake I see people making is they take a picture, especially in the new digital cameras where it's like 52 megapixels and the images are like five megabytes and they upload that to their WordPress site and they wonder why the site's going slow. Well, it's because of the weight of the image and the size. The size is usually way too big, so the browser ends up shrinking it down. Because you can shrink this image down to 10 pixels by 10 pixels, but it's still very heavy. That's why we optimize the image. So two different ways I usually do this is in Photoshop or some other photo editing program on your computer will do. If you get images from Canva, if you make them in Canva, they do not download compressed. So you'd have to make them in Canva, download them, go into your image editing program, and then compress them there. Or you can use a plugin, which is the second part of this tutorial. But first, let's just do Photoshop. I already have the image open in Photoshop. If I go to image and then image size, I see again the width and the height. You don't see how heavy it is in Photoshop, but you see the width and the height. And this resolution of 300 is print quality. It's too much for web. Web is usually 72. Now, as I change to 72, watch the width and the height change. Quite a bit smaller now. And I usually keep my images around 1200, but if I reduce from 300 to 72 and it stays or goes down below 1200 wide, it's fine. I don't really, I'm not too concerned about it. Click on OK. My image is reduced in size. It looks way smaller, but if you look up in the bar up here, this is 33% size. So if we zoom in, 50, 66, 100. This is 100% the size of the image. And if I go and save this image, it actually won't be optimized for web if I just go to save or save as. Where you want to go is save for web. Every photo editing program worth its salt has a save for web option. Click on that. If you think this is helpful content, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you're notified when I publish new videos because I'm publishing on a regular basis and I create videos to help you. So make sure you subscribe. We have this nice little window appearing. We have some presets here that you want to watch out for. Change it to JPEG. I usually go to JPEG high and they change the quality in here to usually medium. You can see it update live. You can see behind the mountains there it got a little crusty. If I do it to low, you'll see even worse. You can see it updating live as you're making these changes. And with JPEGs, you are going to see some loss in the quality. And if we look on the bottom area here, this image at medium compression is going to be about 23 kilobytes versus 745 of the original. And if we go to even maximum, it's 200, which is still almost four times less than the original. So just by going to the save as web, you can have your image quality set to high, and it's still better. Still better in size, it'll still load faster. I usually try for medium. I look at the quality, and if medium doesn't kill the quality too much, I will save it as a medium. And this one, I'm going to keep it as high. So high is 47 kilobytes. So let's save that and ask us where to save it. I'm just going to save it into my downloads. I'm going to call it compressed. And now we have a compressed image on our hard drive. Now what I'm going to do is inside of WordPress, I have short pixel installed. This is one of my favorite image compression programs right now. I like WP Smush and short pixel. I've linked to a video up above where I explain the difference between the two free versions. The free versions are both great, but there is a difference between the two. So if you're interested in either one or both, Watch that tutorial to see the difference in free versions. For Short Pixel, on their pricing page, their free version allows you to compress 100 images per month, which is more than enough for most websites. And if you use the link in the description down below, you'll get 150 images per month. And if you ever do upgrade to a plan, I'll get a small commission for that because it's an affiliate link. It doesn't cost you any more to do that. In fact, you get more. For example, if you use the short plan, you get 50% more compressions through that link. So you would get instead of 5,000, 7,500 if you go through the link down below. Either way, the free version is more than enough for most people. And as with all my videos, if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below or check out the Facebook group linked to in the description where you can post your questions and probably get answers. 
and I have the free version installed here. And I'm just going to upload my original image. I'll also upload both for good measure, actually. I'm going to drag and drop the original and the compressed version right to here. You see the original takes a lot longer to upload. Head back into the library. Make sure you're set to list view if you're using short pixel because then you have a bunch of options over here. And right now it's compressing both of those images. And we'll see what the compression rate is for the original versus the one that we did in Photoshop. So the compression just takes a few moments. And the original, which is the top one here that doesn't have the word compressed in it, the size was reduced by 78%. And even the one that was compressed, it further reduced the size by 40%. Now there's a lot of settings that go into these reductions and getting them to be just right. I've linked a tutorial in the card up above and the description down below, which is a short pixel tutorial that walks through all the settings and how to get them the way that you want them. But if we go into edit for the original, we see our size is still the same, 3000 by 299 or 2199. But the size of the image itself, the weight of it is only 100 kilobytes. And you can see some pixelation, these waves in the clouds in the background, and you can see that it's been compressed. It's not super great quality. But when you put this into a smaller viewing area, you don't need the best quality in the world. And again, this is dependent on the settings you have set in ShortPix. So I just have the default settings running, but in the tutorial I linked to earlier, you can make it so there's no change in visual quality of the image, but there's still compression, but it's less compression. And if we head back out here and we go to edit on the compressed version, which was further reduced, a further 40%, this one is 23 kilobytes. And you can see there is pixelation for you. If we compare it to the original one, this is the one on the hard drive on the right. This is the one on the website on the left. And you can see there is a difference. It is further compressed, like it said. But depending on your website and what your needs are for your website, you may not need super high quality. There are very few websites that need pixel perfect images. So the first thing you have to do is figure out if you need pixel perfect images or not, which short pixel can compress as well. But the compression is minimal because it has to be pixel perfect. But if you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of quality to get smaller image sizes and faster load times, your website load time will benefit from that greatly. So those are the two ways I usually compress images in Photoshop or on the website using short pixel or WP Smush. I use both of them and they're both great. Again, link in the description down below for a comparison on the free versions of short pixel and WP Smush. So you make sure that you pick the right one. One thing to note is it's less effort to have the compression done on the website, less effort for you. Because if you do it in Photoshop every time, you have to open the image, you have to resize the image, you have to save the image, you have to upload the image. Whereas if you're compressing on the website, all you do is upload and the plugin does all that for you. So I find it is a lot more convenient for me if I'm using a plugin. And again, it depends on your site. If you need pixel perfect images, you might wanna have a hand in optimizing every single one to perfection in Photoshop and then not have any compression done on the website. So it depends on what your needs are but definitely check out image compression. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below or in the private Facebook group. There's a link to it in the description down below. And make sure you click the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on your screen so you can get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.